Hi, Candy. screaming each other so the whole plan is always to take the big triple stack of straw bales down and set them out to be used this coming winter let them dry out they'll probably be used for feed more of the bedding because we'll be doing new straw this year uh, so we're gonna set the bales up the back road here as we did last year and the year before as a blind that way the two bulls cannot see each other and as we all know, bulls kind of like jarheads are not that smart. And usually once they cannot see each other, they might hoot at each other once in a while. But then they'll stop. So yeah, that's where we're at. Taking down the wall. And this is where I would sorely love to have my other, my fourth bale spear around. So I can have the four spike rack and then I get to carry two straw bales at once because that's not fishing exactly too hard. Though, with it being we just had another three quarters of an inch of rain last night, we are kind of soft, so maybe I shouldn't carry two at once. So anyway, this is where we're at. It's the world's longest back and forward. Carrying these bales out one at a time. So, I won't bore you. I'll bring you back when something else happens. So, I don't know if you can make that out. You can kind of see strips. Well, this is where we were uh, blowing the alfalfa. The uh, sort of a uh, crappier of alfalfa last fall. We're blowing it out on the ground and amongst the snow and letting the cows pick it up. Well, if it shows you the benefit of that, it sure did make the, uh, the, the pasture come back up nice and dark and green and there's, there's actually some alfalfa coming up in there that wasn't there before. So, Okay, there you go. Gates. Love my gates. Gates do show how squint your posts are though. Yeah, this one ended up that way. And the other one ended up that way. But I think that the post has actually got pulled a little bit. I'm hoping having the gate on it will hopefully settle that out. That's a lot of hoping. Anyway, so yeah. Like I said, these are these are cheap gates. They're you wouldn't use them in corrals because they are lightweight, but they are robust. They like, don't get me wrong. They're not they're not cheaply made. They're just not expensively made. We'll put it that way. So, as you will have no doubt seen, there's two more there. So there's two more going into one of the paddocks by the yard uh, that the big lot is coming north of the yard there and uh, I have to order a bunch more of these but I just want to get the basic gates in and installed and then after that we can order all the rest of the gates that we need so but yeah because like I said I I'm done depending on 
wire gates with a power if you if your power is out you're screwed and then there are three or four strand barbed wire pull gates you're fighting with them and with me having uh, spinal issues i finally just unchain the gate and swing it out so yeah and i just i like them they look nicer yeah i gotta trim some of this stuff back because i don't want saplings right in the gateway that great this no anyway so yeah love it love, love the shoes love the bag love it all well as you'll see in the last video we got the new gates uh, for the perimeter fans which will be those 10 footers will be what will be on all the perimeter fences because 20 foot is as big as we ever want on an external fence because I think the widest thing we will have going in and out at this given point will be 16 feet so 20 foot is more than great so these big 32 foot openings are kind of pointless now that we don't have big harvest equipment right now so yeah so we got those gates and we got some wall paneling because of the project going on inside the house right now and then drum roll the big surprise for the skids here i hope you can hear me because it's a little bit breezy is this guy so yeah um Verdon Ag, yet again, guy over there at uh, Verdon Ag lined us up. Um, so HLA is good equipment. We've got, actually, you've got uh, our other grabbers in HLA. Um, so the reason we went with one of these is, uh, well, A, the price, damn good price, considering how stout built it is. Plus, we wanted one that did not have the tines on the grab we wanted the actual uh, fingers reason for that is it's more for when we're doing silage because when you look at that it gives you more clamping force to hold a bunch of silage in so it's going to be great for uh, piling and loading manure but the majority of its work will be in the winter time um, doing silage when we do silage this is going to help to like pick up uh, all the loose straw around the yard and getting into the back of the pens because pushing with the bucket was getting a bit dangerous. The only thing I don't like about this is this. So what we might end up doing, if it is going to be an issue, we'll just take the cutter and we'll just cut a window. Because cutting a window in there won't do anything to the grab because structurally everything is up here. This is all a quarter inch bent plate. It's all one continuous piece. So making like an oval here would not harm it in any way. And then we could just put mesh over the back of it for when we're doing silage. Because it's a rather big blank opening. That's the only downside to not going with a like a three by four framed grapple. It's just that you've got this big blind spot but like i said we can cut an opening in it if we need to because oh, bug in my face because like i said it is stout so and this is uh i think it's a six footer i think it is we made it so it's the same width as the skid steer tracks so when we're getting into the corners and cleaning up along the walls it is the same width as the machine when it works so yeah keen to get it uh, installed uh, the only thing to do with it is uh, just go back over the grease points install the hose kit that came with it uh, I gotta see whether it came with high speed ends or not um, because I took the high speed ends off that skid steer because we weren't running anything continuous flow so it's just got normal pioneers so we'll get that figured out old skid steers over there waiting chewing Get a hold of this and get on. Yeah, every, every two days, I'll give them uh, a full load of silage. So they get two hay bales every day and then they get a big load every two days. 
and then they sort of pick away at this field here. This field here is not very big. I think it's like 25 acres, maybe 20 acres. So there's over 70 cow calf pairs in here. So it's like I said, uh, if, I, if you haven't heard this before, this is like a sacrificial field. It's getting uh, ripped up this year. Hopefully it's getting plowed. Um, but yeah, we keep them in here till probably around about uh, Canada Day, which for those not in the know, Canada Day is July 1. So July 1st, they'll move off to the uh, grazing paddocks, rotational grazing. And then that means once they're off into the grazing system, that let frees me up to get right at the haying. By Canada Day, I usually will have started doing hay somewhere, either either in one of the big fields or doing highway hay, which I do still do some of. I used to do quite a few miles of highway hay, but it's become very popular over the last few years during the drought. A lot of people started uh, getting getting uh, the highways miles off of relatives and friends and getting away from the guy picked all the garbage and all the uh, fixed all of the parts of the road that were bad so yeah that kind of sucks like I said I put a lot of a lot of time a lot of effort and uh, quite a few years into getting those uh, roadsides groomed whether it would be nice to cut and uh, yeah so I have a I still have a couple of miles that I go out and I cut the uh, slopes a lot of people don't want to do the slopes and I can do that because growing up in Scotland <laughs> you're not afraid of hills so yeah so yeah we won't be long till we're cutting hay we're just uh, checking the south southwest quarter the one that's like predominantly grass till alfalfa uh, the grass is starting to head out so uh, I'll maybe do a uh, short of that here in the next little while but uh, yeah so we will be cutting probably within two weeks so same as last year mid June except uh, last year we were uh, cutting that field mid June there's no sign of any flowers yet on the alfalfa which is good because the only reason the alfalfa flowered early last year was because of the drought it just basically ran out of steam but that's all right it's past the knees some spots it's halfway up the thigh already for crying out loud that's all right it's dandelion season who are you gonna call ghostbusters big time spraying operation There is birth 90 and that is <laughs> cow 66 we have been trying to get her isolated to go on a truck for a few years now she literally ran across the paddock she escaped from the crush a couple of years ago she ran straight across the paddock and went through a three-strand barbed wire fence without even slowing down. Her number is 66, but we're pretty sure there's a six missing from that title. So needless to say, her and baby will be going into that crush and into the trailer and they will go to the uh, forever pan to be uh, gathered up in the fall and head up the road. Lovely big bull calf, nice brockle. So, she's a good mum. No, no denying that part, but you don't want to go near that baby or she will have you. And that's why she's leaving. So, we're getting set up here. And we're going to do a preg check on the last 10 cows here. I'm pretty sure most of them are not carrying, so most of them will be leaving. And then we'll also do a preg check on all these youngsters. Uh, probably half of them are, are maybes for pregnant but they're late so there's a few that are going straight out to the bull and a few that will just go up the road as fat so anyway get to doing we 
Would you be shocked if I said it's raining again? I know. Yeah. Aren't we supposed to be in the 20s next week? Apparently. Anyway. So, we got the crazy cow, 666. Six, six. Uh, 66, we got her and her baby moved. Yeah, we loaded them into the trailer. And, uh use the uh, ball hitch to uh, take them around to the forever pan so yeah they are she will not go to the bull again she will be sold as a fat to the end of the year and uh, we kept the nuts on her boy because he is a absolutely cracking bronco boom awful yeah you can't see out lamar so he's that deep red so Maybe get a picture in at the end of the video of him. Just a cracking good bull. And so, Max, where is he? Max is right there. So he's getting, he might be getting loaded up here shortly. If he hurt his foot, he is walking better, but he's just, he's just not working. Uh, the 91st cow. The cab is getting ready to cab. She was in the shelter here standing humped back and bellowing. She's up at the bale feeding right now. That's a bird. So hopefully by the end of today, by the time you see this video, we will have our 91st birth and our 90th cab on the ground. So that would be kind of cool. Um, but yeah. Now we have been looking at once you cash in Max and then we're going to get uh, Jury the Hereford Bull semen test at the end of the season, maybe at the end of the season, and uh, we're going to sell him on if he doesn't test well, which we're kind of leaning towards he doesn't test well because he's not having good numbers, he's never had good numbers since he got here, and realistically we should go by to the seller, go back to the seller and complain about it, but... Uh, the price right now for uh, cull bulls is pretty good so so yeah we're looking at bringing in another new trainee bull and then we're buying in another herd bull so like I said we're gonna keep the nuts on the little guy and check him at the end of the season and see how he's doing so yeah okay well yeah like I said showing you wet again I know you folks where it's dry like there's Piper Doug complaining again well, you all know you can be too dry and you can be too wet. There's folks around here that cannot get all their crop in. I'm just hoping this is going to stop in time because we are supposed to be starting to cut hay in about 10 days to two weeks. So, yeah, it's going to get interesting. Still no sign of flower yet. And it is... Uh, on average over knee height so we're best places is like mid thigh now but so there you go it's like i said every second night we do a load of silage and they have their hay bales go every day and yet we're uh, getting close to three quarters of an inch again today so we're over nine inches of rain this season so far and it's the what 10th of June and uh, yeah me and Mrs. Piper Doug were out moving that cow and calf today in full like winter jacket almost dang near needed a toucan today it's that blinking cold like what's going on really mother nature get your stuff in order yeah. Like I said, there's people still trying to mud in the last of their seating. Pardon me. Woo. Feels like you should be hibernating. So, yeah, we're gonna have to start getting equipment ready here for a long because we uh, will be starting to cut hay in two weeks. More than, yeah, two weeks. So, thank you for watching everybody. Uh, Blackbird had her baby, so that's the 90th 
baby on the ground. A lovely little black and white brockle. So that's 91 cows have calved. Still a long way from our end goal, but we've got a couple more still that we know for sure are in calf, and then we're gonna do some prag jacking and then we'll know who the drags are, so. Hopefully you'll uh, come along for the next one. Hopefully the sun's shining too. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get going. Teddy bye everybody.